This is Global Tail Link. I have a call from Harry Tom. An inmate at the California Men's Colony, San Luis Obispo, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Waking up in the cell, this ain't it. Life is a living hell, this ain't it. Food tastes like trash, this ain't it. Lord, please forgive my past, this ain't it. What you doing in the street, is it worth it? Death the prison, only two things, that's for certain. Welcome to another episode of Global Tail Link. Talk about the destructive behavior and culture that continues to lead our youth to death or incarceration. And I'm live here from the California State Prison to let our youth know this ain't it. I'm your host, Perry Thompson. What's going on, Dusty? How you doing today? Man, I'm doing all right, man. Hope you're doing good, dude. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well, man. All things considered. Good, good. What's up with those words of wisdom? comes from a, a Marvin Gaye song, the late great Marvin Gaye. He says, Mother, mother, there's too many of us crying. Brother, 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 there's far too many of us dying. You know, we got to find a way to bring some love in here today. Father, father, we don't need to escalate. The war is not for answer. Only love can conquer hate. You know we got to find a way to bring some love in here today. These are the words of the great, great Marvin Gaye. And I hope you can take heed to them. There's too many of our mothers dying. Too many of our, too many of our mothers crying. And too many of our brothers dying. And only on us to correct this behavior. And as he said, the only way we're going to correct this behavior This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I truly admit that I have indeed committed some of the crimes for which I now stand before this court to be sentenced. For these acts, for all the people I may have heard it, I am truly sorry. Now that my mind and body are no longer tortured by drugs, I must ask the court, why are you choosing to throw me away to ride in the prison cage for the rest of my life. This great state of California go to the ears of Earth to say is a dangerous species, especially these that are sick or on the verge of extinction. Young black males, according to the latest statistics, are currently on that list. If I was a spotted owl or a great carnivore or a humpback whale, a dolphin, or even a Redwood tree. You will burn candles all night long trying to legislate laws and appropriate money to save me. But I'm just a black man with no money to protect myself, no skills to earn a living, and no federal or state agency to come to my rescue. You have received, you have reviewed my past, and I feel just one time in my tortured life you would have stepped forward and said yes. Let's save this dying tree before it becomes fire, before it becomes endangered. But of course, that did not happen. Like all the rest of my species, I was cut down and stockpiled in your final solution, the California Department of Corrections. There to rot away or kill others like me for a number of years. Year after year, man. 
being taught no skills, no opportunities, not the least bit of compassion, clearly showed a spotted owl or even a bunch of trees. I was a drug addict, sick, and I needed your help. Yet, you chosen to let this man, this human, this human being, fester and rock away in prison to become just another young black male on your list. I only ask why. Why is there no help for me and my dying species? Why no treatment? Why no school? Why no special legislation to stop the genocide? In closing, I respectfully ask this court to please take the time to see these individuals, these individual souls and their infants. Don't let them become just another spotted owl. We are the greatest country in the world. No Yet we cannot, we will not save the precious soul of so many of the demons we call drugs. How long do you keep thinking it will solve itself? How many more do you send to the oven of extermination? How many more souls do you become responsible for? Since you are about to impose on me, whether it's 450 years to life or 250 years to life. It will be the shining star of nature as they lead me to the other, to no return. I love my life, Your Honor. Now that I can think clearly, I feel I must speak out for my soul and for all who have perished and ask you to show me mercy. That is all I have to say, Your Honor. Now, after the judge wow. read this letter, she stated, after reading this letter, all I heard was a bunch of excuses and the manipulative attempt for mercy. Wow. She went on and sentenced this man to 81 years to life. Today, after 27 years, he is now 65 years old and remained in prison. He has accepted his faith that he will likely die in prison. So unless you want to be writing a letter to a judge begging for mercy, you need to stop doing whatever destructive behavior you are doing because the judge will not care about any of your excuses. The judge will sentence you to die in prison without hesitation. And soon after that sentence, you will realize this ain't it. Your worst nightmare will become your reality. Damn, that was about as deep as it gets. <clears throat> oh, man. Let me ask you, um, or explain to these kids out there, man, who, who think the court system is a joke. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Explain to the kids out there who think the court system is a joke. I mean, you said it perfect. Like, you're just another number. You're just another black man. You're just another notch on the board. You know, and how they give you these what lawyers that don't really care about you. And, you know, just, just tell them about what they could expect, man, if they're out there doing dumb shit and, and, and how the courts don't give a damn about them. Oh, yeah. Sure, well, you go to court, don't not be expecting no leave. You not be thinking, um, well, I'm going to tell them, how I was beat growing up. And this is the thing that I thought. I was beat growing up by my parents. I knew it was a lot going on in my house. I was supposed to fall right. I didn't know no better. They not going to care about none of that. They going to slap the gobble down and say 50 years to life. And as I've said before, first you might think it's a game. I know I did. I'm thinking, man, there ain't nobody going to try to keep me here that long. I was just about 10. I'm 17 in. They and they always say it's, it's easy to get in trouble. It is so, so hard right now to get out of here. So every day, I be praying that these people working on my case help me get out of here. But as of today, my sentence said 50 years to life. And it's not a joke. It's going to go into the system. They're going to give you a, a public defender if you ain't got no money. And even if you ain't got no uh, Nine times out of ten, ain't no, ain't no, I'm, it's sad to say this, but there is no such thing in many instances as a fair trial when people are personally covered. So, 
in there. Gonna, he's gonna put on a show. They're gonna, they're gonna take your life like it's a joke. They're gonna have all type of monitors showing different graphs. They're gonna be sometimes blatantly lying on you. They can have you dead there. But when they take you to trial, they're gonna put on a show still, making up stuff just to make sure you get in. Then when it's all said and done, you're gonna have a judge look at you with a straight face, no hesitation, and hand out some, some numbers that sometimes are unbathomed. Like there's people in here stuff like 230 years plus 14 plus 6 plus 3 like this. Look at you straight in your face and tell you that. And now you sit in prison like what did you do for 230 years? There ain't no ain't no early release. There ain't no finish change. They can give you time time. They give you 33%. You still finish. And you don't understand these things until you sit in my prison. That's why I come to y'all every Sunday to hope that I get to y'all and let y'all know this ain't it. This lifestyle of glorifying destructive behavior ain't get you nowhere. Nowhere. But you cannot logic, respect, gain something positive out of going out there and just being destructive. It ain't going to work for you. It just ain't going to work. Mm. For all y'all out there, you know, that think it's gay, don't, 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 don't put yourself at the mercy of this court. Because you soon find that it's not a gay. Man. And talk to them, too. Make, tell them to keep in mind when they're out there getting these face tattoos and all these tattoos on their neck and all these whacking out this and that. And, and it don't matter. When, when you're in court, it don't matter how nice your suit is. You know, if you got a button down, it don't matter. The jury is still going to take those tattoos on your face into consideration. Yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. Uh, you, you, the, the tattoos is, uh, is a guilty verdict just, just you know, alone. Like, Man. I know several guys here that I believe they got found guilty because of the, the tattoos. They didn't really have no evidence on them, but you show up in court with big dang tattoos all on your face and all over your neck and body. Jury likely not from your uh your your community. Likely Beverly Hills, San Fernando Valley, and all these type of places that don't relate to you. So they're gonna be looking at you as if he didn't do this, he did something else. With all those gang tattoos and stuff on this face, this dude's an animal. They're gonna they're gonna find you guilty. And not only just that part, uh, I had a, a friend here. Have big tattoos all over his face. I'm talking about whole day, neck, everything covered in tattoos. And he uh, stopped banging. So now, he, those tattoos on his face, Damn. other than his life, this is one of the biggest stresses. Because he tells me, like, man, I can't even get a girl. Nobody's going to take me serious. I got all this stuff on my face. And then when I tell them I ain't even part of that no more, they really be like, you got all this stuff on your face. Now that you just see the gavel come down on you, boom, you, now you looking like a fool. Looking like a fool. You got all this stuff on your face. You could change your life. And now you're hoping that you're going to get out and find the opportunity to get all this stuff and raise it off your face. So yeah, be conscious, man, when you go out there and get the tattoos on your face. Man, you have 60 seconds remaining. I also say uh, face tattoos to get yourself killed without even knowing something. Mm. They see what's on your face when you, you may not even be killed. Paying attention to you next week, so you even got your head. So just be conscious about you know, the things that you catch on your face. Waking up in the cell, this ain't it. Life is a living hell, this ain't it. Food tastes like trash, this ain't it. Lord, please forgive my past. This ain't it. What you doing in the street? Is it worth it? Death the prison, only two things, that's for certain.